It's significant new information about this investigation. You remember the news about this broke last week, although the three women were actually rescued in October. But ever since, the police have been very careful about the information they've been giving out because obviously they want to gain the confidence of the three women to get as much information as possible and to conduct their investigation uh, in, in as thorough but as careful a way as possible. But they have now, it seems, gradually gained the confidence of, of the three women who've been rescued. Uh, and they are able to say a little bit more now about the two people who it's alleged were keeping them in captivity and using this phrase invisible handcuffs over the last 30 years. And what the police are saying is that the, the suspects, uh, the two people, are of Indian and Tanzanian origin. They came to the UK in the 1960s and they believe that uh, two of the alleged victims met the male suspect in London through a P shared political ideology is how the police are describing right, so it. So that sort of refers to this idea of the cult that we've been reading about in the newspapers this yes. morning. Yes, uh, so it, it seems that there was something that brought them together okay. and then uh, what the police go on to say is that they, uh, they live together in a collective uh, at an address, uh, presumably in London. Now, uh, the police go on to say that the pe people involved and the nature of that collective and how it, it operated is all subject to our investigation and they are slowly and painstakingly uh, looking into that. Then he goes on to say that the collective at some point came to an end. So people who were involved in that, we assume, dispersed uh, went their separate ways, but the women ended up continuing to live with the suspects, and that is how it seems mm. they stayed at the, w w with the two suspects for the whole of those 30 years. And he goes on and says, we believe emotional and physical abuse has been a feature of all of the victims' lives. The 30-year-old woman does have a birth certificate, he says, however, uh, that is all the official documentation they have been able to find at this stage. We're just getting some, some more details. Cotton Yard now telling us that they're looking around Peckford Place in SW9, which is that area of Lambeth. And the, the reason that's interesting <clears> is because we've been speculating all week the residents in this particular street must be astonished that they didn't yes. know this was going on for 30 years. Yes, and it's interesting now that uh, we know details of, of, of the address because, again, the police were very careful not to uh, disclose all of that earlier in the week. But now we know it's SW9, Peckford Place, uh, and it, it's possible that we will be able to see sort of footage of the police conducting their house-to-house -house inquiries because the other thing they're saying this afternoon is that they are now approaching neighbours to try and ask them, well, did you know anything? Did you spot anything? Was there anything unusual about all this? Because they want to obviously get as good an overview of the situation as they can. One other thing to tell you, Christian, um, as part of this statement, the charity that helped to have these women rescued has also released a statement this afternoon saying that they have seen an extraordinary rise in calls to their helpline service since the rescue of these three women.